what's up guys i'm finally back from houston and i'm super excited to be doing deck profiles again i instead of doing the top eight like i normally planned i'm actually just going to be doing just continuing on tat and if a deck comes up from tat that um i was kind of influenced by or really was inspired by at the regionals i would just do that deck profile so instead of doing top eight with six bahamuts and two melgus i'm just gonna do once i get to bahamut and tat which will be sometime this week I'll just kind of show off all the variants of Bahamut and maybe show which one I like the most and I'll just keep doing that as I get into CMF because I hear there was a Dracula deck that did very well too which is really surprising because everyone was saying how hard it would be to deactivate Dracula because Bahamut would just never let you send something to the graveyard. So I'm just going to see how it goes. I kind of rather do that. I want to show off the decks that kind of didn't have enough light and that's what this Alice deck profile is actually. I played against Dylan Robbins and he told me that Timmy Van and him worked really hard on this deck. And this is actually his exact deck minus one main deck card because it was 41 and I kind of saw it as more of a side card even though it was a really good meta call. So I just threw it in the side because I didn't have his entire side deck anyway. And um, I played against him, I think it was my fourth round and no, third round, third round for sure. And I, I was just blown away. I mean, I've never taken a loss so well. I'm not one of the people that really get upset when I lose anyway, but I was more inspired and excited from this loss than I am half of the time when I win. And his, he was just, his plays were flawless and I give him so much credit. I hope he's watching this because I can't express how much I was just blown away by his playstyle. Not to mention how amazing his deck was now every single card just connected so well. And yeah, so my Alice deck profile is going to be kind of, you know, dedicated to him. So let's see what he got. <laughs> So for his magic stones, he ran a little red, the pure stone. This was just used to call either red, black, or white. He mainly called black, with, though I don't think he ever plans on calling any other color, but it's a possibility. One magic stone of moon shade. Um, this is really good with Alice because it gives you access to green and blue if needed, which he's not maining in the deck. And so if you see additions and you need addition hate, you can get access to that. And if you need to draw a card, you can do that as well. Two Magic Stone of Heat Ray for Light Red because he does have a lot of red in the deck and wanted a splash of light extra other than his two Magic Stone of Heaven's Rift. So he felt as though for the Bahamut matchup it was extremely important to have light for the 1000 gain and because you can of course get imperishable with the Regalias he just um, kind of out heals the damage he takes and the way he, it sounds like it wouldn't work, but the way he was doing it on me anyway, I was playing a grim aggro deck and I mean, I was swinging in with Gwybers and Hamlins quite often and he had no problem being able to heal off my damage and even damage he was getting from Rasputin. And I'll kind of explain as I go, but um, the, the light worked extremely well on the deck. And then four Magic Stone of Scorched Bales for Dark Red. For his Resonator lineup, he ran three Guinevere's. Um, I really like that he's only running 3 and not 2 or 4. A lot of people always feel this obligation to either run 4 or 2 of a card I've noticed. I mean, I'm guilty of this too because I do that a lot. And Guinevere is one of those cards where when I'm playing against someone because I haven't used her personally in any of my decks really yet. Um, not against any uh, big local events anyway, but um, every time I see Guinevere, I'm like, oh my god, this card is awesome. And then they kind of always like pitch another one with her effect because they always have too many in their hand. So it was really interesting to see, like with three, you're, you'll see one early, but it's not going to clog and it's not going to double up on you too often. And I like that he was running three of this, especially because he's playing really heavy on Incarnate. And he wasn't like, oh, I need four of this and four of this and four of this and four of this. And then my Incarnates are alive. Like he had no problem just running whatever he felt was right and playing off of that. And then four Rook Egg. Um, of course, his qualm was really well, <clears throat> excuse me, with Guinevere because you can get the Banish effect off and because it's Incarnate. Um, it works with that as well. Rook Egg in general is just an amazing card right now and I don't think it's going to stop seeing any play even after September because if more fire cards come out that are great, it's just going to search more of those. 3 Rasputin. This is kind of the same argument uh, as Guinevere. Rasputin is one of those cards where you like definitely need, there's no way not to be running this in, in an Incarnate deck, but 4 is always a little too much. And um, the 3, he never failed to have this. I mean, he just mulligans heavy for it if needed. If he opens like a Rook Egg and Guinevere, he can always um, use Guinevere in hopes of drawing into one while still being able to search other necessary cards with Rook Egg. And it just worked extremely well. I, I never saw him need anything. Like, he never seemed like he couldn't incarnate, which is extremely important, of course. And then two Mozarts. Um, the way he used Mozart was just unbelievable. He was... His play style and his timing was just so amazing to me. I mean, I, at one point, I believe I had two Gwybers and a Hamlin. And he had a Mozart, a Rasputin. And I don't remember what the other card was, but he had another card on the field. So it could have been like a Guinevere. 
And, you know, so I'm anticipating, okay, he dropped the Motar, he's going to incarnate, I'm going to pick, you know, Hamlin, he'll, you know, maybe go into Naya or something and take out the other card. So we'll see what happens. And he goes, seven Mozart, uh, Banish, Rasputin, and I guess the Guinevere it was for Haster, getting rid of my Guyber. And then he has only Mozart now and Haster. And then he goes, you know, add Rasputin Black, blah, blah, blah. J activate Alice, he tapped the red sword, so he does 1200 damage to my Guyber instead of a thousand, so that kills my second Guyber. And then he goes, recover red sword by banishing Mozart, and Hamlin's the only monster in the field, so bye. And he, I believe, even paid the black with Alice, so I even minus one from my hand. And I was just like, he literally just used like two or three cards, essentially, and only like a total of like four mana and just completely wipe my board of anything I had that was extremely relevant too. I mean, without those Glibers and Hamlins, I wasn't going to get far. So I was just like, I mean, of course I know about the whole Red Sword untapping. I saw it coming. It's just how instead of, he plays so like carefully and specific with all of his cards, everything he, he just picks like, you know, this is the issues and this is how I'm going to deal with them one by one. It sounds like a very common play and of course I've made plays like this too, but there was something about just the way he played kind of like set it all up it's almost like he was allowing me to set up certain fields just because he knew he can particularly answer to every single thing and anticipated everything i was going to do it was completely ridiculous and i just can't give him enough credit for it and three haster haster is just insanely amazing in this deck too i've always liked haster as well because um, my friend plays a crimson girl deck and he uses um, biaki as his main uh, win condition and he doesn't play any hasters and I'm always telling them, like, you have to play Hastards, it's so good, because essentially it's like Carmilla, and not to mention you can search it with Rook Egg, and you can kind of go into loops with it often if you keep having Rasputins and Rook Eggs on the field. So you just keep searching more copies. For Naya, um, <clears throat> excuse me again, sorry guys. It's extremely early, and I'm still kind of like jet lagged and all weird, but anyway, um, I know in two of them are Sam, and two of them are, and I feel gross, don't, don't judge me. But, um, Naya is of course extremely relevant, it just controls my hand, it gets any of the answers out. If he's going against a deck that can use Flame of the Outer World, he can go into Naya and get rid of the Flame of the Outer World, so when he J-activates Alice, it's totally safe. And um, it's just, you know, Naya is self-explanatory. He wanted to run Naya because he has Spirals on the side, but uh, he wanted to main deck Spirals, but of course it's not too great against Bahamas because they just win by top decking half the time anyway. And so he felt as though getting Naya on board still kind of gives you that hand control while still getting a really relevant size beater on the field. So he just stuck with Naya, um, four of them over any spirals. Uh, three Gwyber. This was what took me by insane surprise. I didn't expect to see Gwyber in this deck, especially because there's so many high levels already, but it worked so well. I mean, it kind of makes sense too, because all those mid-game Guinevere's and Rasputin's, if you double up on Rasputin, you're always like, oh, I didn't really need two, and you don't really want to be paying 400 life that often to get both of them back, and they just make Gwyber life so easily. And if you drop two, uh, let's say you drop a Rasputin and a uh, Guinevere mid-game, you drop Gwyber and then incarnate the first two for like a Haster or another Naya, that's, you're, you can essentially go into Naya, take out any answer they have to Gwyber out of their hand, and now you have this awesome Gwyber on the field, another 800-800, and you can always deactivate the next turn to get even more pressure. So it was just really good. And then his last card was one Susano for his resonators. Uh, Susano was amazing. I mean, I've seen people search this out with Rook Egg before, but it's just a great meta call. My friend Adam Cisneros was also maining, I think it was two Susanos in his Vlad deck, and it worked extremely well. I mean, you're either going to go against a deck that has Gwyber, or you're going to go against a deck that has Bahamut. So just, you know, maining at least one is not really going to uh, hinder you too much. Not to mention that if you're going kind of against a control deck that kind of drags out the game, paying 6 for it if they don't have any dragons isn't so bad anyway. He kind of, you know, gives you a lot for summoning him anyway. So it's totally fine. And um, yeah, he pulled this on me. I think it was game 3 where he goes um, incarnate a Rook Egg and Rasputin go into, I believe it was Hastra at the time, to get rid of my Hamlin. And I think at this point I also had two Gwybers, a Hamlin, and like some Cheshires or something. And then he searches out Susano, drops it, blows up another Gwyber, and attempts to swing into the other Gwyber, which was rested. And I was just forced to block with Cheshire, so I'm taking like a thousand anyway. And now he has a Susano that I have to go crash into with my Gwyber because I can't let him swing in with it so many times. And, you know, of course that's going to get rid of my Gwyber as well because it's 12-12. And I was just like, man, like every play this guy makes is just so on point. I mean, he had an answer in every situation. It was just so awesome. 
His spell lineup is actually extremely simple, and I love it even more for being so simple. He has four Excalibur and four Leviathan, the Demon Sword. Um, I wouldn't think Alice would run eight swords. I was thinking when I first saw him use it, I was like, okay, he doubled up on one uh, Excalibur and one Leviathan, so he's probably running like two and two. But they work so well in the deck, of course, because of the Imperishable, the only thing you have to be careful with is Flame, but you can always anticipate it, and with a lot of swords, you can always pitch for mana anyway, and the colors for the mana in this deck are really relevant, because if you drop a Leviathan and you need another Fire for a Susano mid-game, that's possible too. You can always pitch it for, you know, getting an extra Guinevere on board, or, you know, anything you need for Incarnate early. You can use Excalibur to pitch for Light to heal with Alice, or, you know, play a Gwyber if you don't have the Light for it yet. Um, there's just so many ways you can use a lot of swords, and I was happy to see he was using many. I mean, worst case scenario, if you open at least one Excalibur and one Leviathan, you just mulligan the rest and don't see them until later. And he actually told me, because I was worried, I was like, um, after we played, I asked him how many swords he was running, and he told me eight. And I was like, well, you know, what happens if you mulligan and then you mulligan into them? And he was like, oh, I actually had a match where I mulliganed and got two more Excaliburs, and I think he had an Excalibur and a Leviathan already or just Leviathan, so he had like three swords, and he's like, I actually won that game, so, um, he, the reason why it's so good is because he main decks two Duel of Truths, so essentially what he does is he uses Leviathan more than Excalibur, I mean, not per se, but I mean in, in the case where he has Duel of Truth, so he pumps up Alice's attack instead of the defense with, of course, the damage uh, you get from Leviathan, and he just Duel of Truths into you, and obviously sacks, let's say, Excalibur for... Uh, imperishable and so he kills whatever he's attacking like let's say a Gwyber he he uses one Excalibur two Leviathans you know draw and tap do it again that's 1300 damage so he'll kill your Gwyber or let's say your Bahamut he'll go back uh, to his ruler's side and then just again be able to deactivate do 1200 damage discard a card from your hand heal another thousand life possibly draw a card with his Moonshade it's just it works so well I mean I've, I've never liked Duel of Truth even in, like Dracula I just didn't like it because I felt like it was too specific i was like by the time you set up all these like steel plays with dracula or anything like that it's just too much i guess i feel like it was not necessary you just had so much damage on board anyway but with alice this is almost like a super control card because it lets you set up your next turn so well he was playing on like four to five stones anyway and he was just able to just keep healing with four to five stones every game and i couldn't really do anything because even i mean i wasn't running any red but even if i was running split He's taking the most 1200 to 1500 damage, and that sounds like a lot of damage when he's healing constantly with 15, has Gwybers to block your flying, has Hasters clearing your board, and just everything like that. It's just not enough to be able to get rid of it. And of course, I'm not saying it's like unbeatable or anything because Bahamas can open really sacky at times, but I mean, if they open that well, and even if you're using Bahamut, then it's a mirror, you're most likely going to lose if they're going first anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then four Thunders. Super self-explanatory, and three Flame of the Outer World. Um, doubling up on this is awesome because you get to permanently kill a Bahamut. It kills Kane, which um, I didn't see a lot of Kane decks, but I played against them, and they are really strong. So it's nice to be able to kill those. And then there was a, there was a really good amount of Alice players, so if they weren't using uh, Red Black, you can uh, Flame them as well. Because I know a lot of Alices that were using Light Blue and Light Red did really well. Uh, my friend Angel, actually, from Core used uh, a light red light blue alice deck and did really well i think he got um somewhere in the 20s i'm not sure this deck actually got 21st as well so um yeah so i mean there it's kind of an out to a lot in this format and it's just always been a great card and always will be so yeah those are the spells for the side deck he had two cinderellas um this ruined me when he said it into it because i was playing kind of like a really quick aggro deck with um grim like i said and, you know, I would drop, like, eight cats and Gretels and um, just everything that gives you draws to go into Gwyber or Ramp to be able to have a bunch of stones. And he would just go, Cinderella, your entire board. And I'd just be like, okay, well, I'm just going to scoop. And um, I never, I didn't like the deck I was playing. I don't know why I went with it. I normally don't like playing Grim in general, but um, I don't know. Um, it was weird. I don't know why I played it, but... Uh, it wasn't even because I lost. I, I don't only want to think that, oh, because I did bad with the deck and I lost, it, um, I'm kind of salty about it. That's not the point. I just didn't enjoy the deck, and I hate playing a deck I don't enjoy, so I don't know why I did that. But he also had two sets. Um, he used this on me at one point. I guess he had sided into it. I didn't even know this was a side deck card till after. Um, he was able to keep getting his cards back, 
because his Cinderella kept wiping my board and he would be able to plus off the cards into the graveyard. I don't think it was extremely necessary because his hand was always at like five to six or seven anyway. He never really needed, I guess, the recovery, but I mean, it did work. I, I don't know about Seth. Um, I personally don't like it, I guess, but um, it worked, so I guess you could just leave it in there. Uh, he didn't tell me about zero. Some of the side deck, by the way, he just told me he had uh, two spirals, two zeros, I mean two Cinderella's and two sets. So everything else is just going to be um, what I would add in. But I put three zeros in because zero is really good against Bahamut. Being able to drop this on their draw lets them only be able to summon like a, a hunter in the Black Forest without dying. Um, it kills Apostle of Cain, it kills Rook Egg, it kills... Uh, Black Goat. It kills anything that they can actually just try to summon to sack for uh, Bahamut. And I just like the idea that if I drop this on their draw, unless they have a Hunter, or there's Wolf Haunted in the Black Forest too, but not really anyone was using it. Um, some people were using Light Red and it kills Percival as well. I mean, of course, you still get the Enter effects, but as long as they can't try to flood the board to get something off to deactivate, it's totally fine and I just like it in general. Plus, worst case scenario, something I like about Zero is if they already have a Bahamut and you can take a hit and you can drop this during the end phase, you can technically just crash into Bahamut and then use Flame. And of course, they're going to have the sword and use Imperishable if you're going for that, but it's still just another way to get it off the field. So I like Zero in general. And then Biaki, uh, he also didn't mention this, of course, but um, I like having one in the side just in case. It's, you know, it's good against stuff like, let's say, a Grim deck that uses Rapunzel if you can get this off early game. Um, you can always block that with like a Rasputin or anything else you get flying. Um, you can just, in general, it's just you can kind of be safe from flyers. Uh, it does work against Bahamut, but mainly if you go first. So I didn't want to main deck any or, you know, suggest to him that he should main deck any. Because if you're going second, it just becomes a blocker to Bahamut. And at that point, you're not gaining anything really. You're just kind of surviving one more turn, which you can just do with healing a thousand anyway. So I just added one. He had a Bullet of Envy. Uh, this is one of the cards that was in the main deck. It was his 41 card. And um, like I said, it's a really good meta call because it works great, but I just took it out because um, I figured I'll just make it like 40 cards and put it in the side. Two Fetal Movement, uh, just good against Black in general. You can make sure they can't use Necronomicon. You can uh, try to get some extra damage in there. So it's not bad. It's good to control the grave. Two Spiral of Despair. Like I said, he said he wanted to main these really bad, but it's really hard because of Bahamut, so he just didn't. And two Dark Pulse. I think he, um, this he did use on me, I believe. I can't tell if he used Dark Pulse and Cinderella or if it was just Cinderella. But I believe he had Dark Pulse and just forgot to mention that this was in the side. And um, yeah, Dark Pulse is Dark Pulse. It's just amazing, this format. You can kill Knights with it. You can kill um, Grim Green with Green Grim with it. You can. It would even work. In, Brian Scott was running something very similar. Um, no, well, not very similar to mine, but... Um, he had kind of like Achilles and all these uh, low drop monsters and he would go into Gwybers and uh, he didn't run Light, I believe. No, wait. Yeah, no, he had Light, of course, because he had Achilles, but um, he didn't have Tell Fairy Tale, I mean. And he kind of just spammed the field and would just OTK with Rapunzel. And um, Achilles would protect, protect Rapunzel and stuff. So being able to get rid of all of Rapunzel's targets is actually really good because she can't buff if, you know, you keep clearing your board. So Dark Pulse and Duran is just really, really good. So thanks again for watching, guys. If you guys do have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, make sure you do because I have all of TAT coming this week with CMF coming for the next two weeks. And if by Friday we see any spoilers, I'll be doing videos on those as well. And I will catch you guys next time.